here today to do some reviews of some of the most recently read graphic things that I've been reading. I've read quite a few recently and a lot of them have been amazing so I'm gonna try and be quick-ish but of course I will end up chatting a bit more about the ones I've really really enjoyed or really hated although I don't think there's any that I really hated in this batch so let's get started. So the first thing I have to show you guys is this, it is issue number four I believe of Catzine. I've been reading this series since it started and really enjoying it and it's produced by a lady called Katrina Chapman. It's a little zine, very very tiny as you can see, very beautiful production value as you can see and it's printed on really high quality paper. It basically chronicles a lot of the adventures that she went on when she was traveling around, holidays that she's been on, things like that but it's done in comic form and it also has sections that are sort of regular feature pages, stories, so it basically is a mishmash of anything she wants to include that month and I really really enjoy it. There's a little content at the front to sort of uh, give you a bit of an idea of some of the things that she includes within this but I really enjoy this every time I read it which is why I've continued collecting it. So I gave this one a 4 out of 5 stars. If you like pencil drawn imagery I would highly recommend this because it is all pencil drawn and beautifully done if I do say so myself. It's fabulous. I'm really really impressed every time I read these and I just love them so I'll put a link to her website below where you can pick them up. The next two I have to show you guys is Chew Volume 6 and Volume 7. This is a fantastic series that I started quite a while ago. Um, I think early last year or maybe even the year before that I started this series and I'm up to Volume 7 but I took a little break and dives back in with six and seven and I'm so so loving this series it's just fun it's just one of those series that is really quite bizarre and quite wacky but it works because it has the humor element that makes you smile and makes you engage with the characters the artwork within is quite similar to the artwork you see on the front as you can see different pages have different color tones so this is a fairly green page whereas this is more pinks and purples. And then we have pages that are a bit more blue in tone and a bit more somber. I just really enjoy this series because of the fun that it brings and it does make me smile when I'm reading it. It also makes me roll my eyes at times, but on the whole, it is a very fun series that I can't really complain about because it's just a bit wacky, a bit crazy, but kind of awesome all at once. And it's about this guy here called Tony Chu, and this is his friend or assistant. This is his nemesis, this is his sister on the front, so it's basically revolving around everyone in Chu's life and it follows him as he investigates crimes in this world where chicken has been banned because of all sorts of things going wrong with it. He manages to have this sort of weird special power where if he bites into a piece of food he can kind of psychically link with where the food has been, who has handled it, what's been going on in their lives, what emotions they were feeling when they were handling the food, all that sort of weird stuff. So it is bizarre, like really bizarre, and it is quite gruesome at times, so if you don't like that you might not enjoy it. If you do enjoy that then you'll probably really like these because they're just funny and they always give me a giggle. So I gave both of these a 4 out of 5 stars. The next one I have is My Father's Arms Are A Boat. This is by Stein Eric Lund and Oivind Torstetter and this is translated from I believe Norwegian. This was kindly sent on to me by Jen so thank you to Jen. Look at the little fox character on the front there, he is incredibly cute. It's a really tiny children's illustrated book. You can see that it actually uses cutouts as the illustration style which I love. You can always see the little fox character. It is about a young boy who is dealing with the loss of his mother and his father is there for him but you know his father's also dealing with the loss. It kind of is a bit weird like the translation of the actual wording is a little bit weird and it kind of adds this ethereal peculiar tone to the story. We also follow this lonely fox character who is kind of a metaphorical representation of how they're feeling um, kind of isolated out in the snow cut off that sort of thing but the father teaches his kid about how to deal with the grief and of course there is a happy ending at the end. I really really enjoyed this, it was just light, fun, such a quick read but definitely one where the illustrations are stunning 
and the cutout designs of them are really beautiful so I would definitely say if you've got young kids who you're interested in teaching about grief but in a light fun way this is a book that they will probably really like and I definitely appreciate the artwork incredibly incredibly beautiful so thank you Jen for sending this to me and I gave it a three out of five stars overall. The next one I have to talk to you about is Everything is Teeth. This is by Evie Wilde and Joe Sumner and this one focuses on sharks as a motif but mainly it's an autobiography of Evie Wilde's life. She had a childhood where it was kind of divided between England and Australia so her family lived in Australia and every summer they would go over there to visit and whilst they were there it was a very very different lifestyle to that of her English going to school living day-to-day -day life whereas in Australia it was more about having adventures, exploring, discovering things but also being wary of sharks because sharks are definitely more of a problem in Australia than England, thank goodness. But yeah, it's it's a really interesting story about her life and sort of the juxtaposition that she had going on in her head about whether sharks were good or whether they were something to be terrified of. This is the art style it's mostly drawn in. Yellows for the highlights and then black and white for the rest of it. I really like this art style, even though it is quite over-exaggerated. I still enjoy it. And we have black and white on some pages as well. And as you can see, the actual sharks that are pictured within this are all very beautifully done. Um, Hand-painted illustrations, which are just stunning. So I love that. Some of the pages are very, very big imagery, as you can see. So we have like very bold, exciting stark imagery some pages have an awful lot more going on and you can see that there's like these shark jaws and things which are actually also the end papers which i think look really really cool i will say this is quite a bloody one if you're not into blood or it freaks you out then you probably want to look away from the screen for the next 10 seconds or so whilst i show you a somewhat bloody page this is the page i was talking about there are quite a lot of these sorts of things going on However, if you're not into blood, you can now look back at the screen. I'll also show you this close-up of what the sharks are drawn like. Like, look how beautifully detailed that is. It's just so stunning and very realistic, which is cool. Yeah, this is a really interesting one. It definitely has good moments, like funny moments and moments where you're like a bit grossed out by it. But I really enjoyed the imagery that they use within this and the way they combine the sort of more traditional classic comic imagery with painted design photorealistic imagery as well. It just worked really, really well. And as a whole, it's a fantastic story. So I gave this one a four out of five stars as well. The next one I have to show you guys is The River. This is by Alessandro Sanna. It's translated from Italian and it's all done in this absolutely stunning watercolor style. As you can see, this basically focuses on one section of a river whilst seasons change and you follow a few different characters. You never know their names, but you just follow their silhouettes essentially as the river changes season by season. So at the start of each season, you get a page like this, which will just say autumn. Autumn is painted red earth and golden skies. Like the paintings of Fra Angelico, the old timers speak to me of the skin of the river as if it were a sleeping animal that might awake at any moment and become something terrible, flooding and submerging everything. And I mean, this imagery is stunning. Every page has a colour tone that is kind of the focus of that page. And there are different panels on each page. As you can see, most of the story is silent. And some seasons, I think, were better than others. And some imagery was much nicer than others, in my opinion. But obviously, it's all personal taste. But as you go through, you get to see all of the different seasons. And you get to follow a couple of different stories of these characters who live by this river and the things that they do. So this page sort of focuses on this little man. And you see him in his boat sort of passing by. And then you get closer and closer and you see him walking back to his house after he's pulled his boat up to the shore. Um, and then you follow him again as he's continuing his journey back towards his house, which is down here. Um, and then you can see once he gets in the house, there's all of these children who are coming home from school at the same sort of time. So you're never really explicitly told, but it is very, very beautiful. If you like watercolour art, then I think there are some pages like these pages, which are some of my favourite, which are just beautiful. I also love the way that he has managed to sort of make the torch stand out here on this page, the torch of the bicycle that they're on. It's just so cool, like so incredibly beautiful and I cannot really show it very well on the screen because I'm sort of holding it like this all over the place 
but it really is absolutely stunning to look at. And another one of the stories you get is like this marriage that's happening, which is super, super cute. So there are lots of things going on within this story, even though there aren't that many words and it is mostly pictures. It's very, very beautiful. And I gave this one a four out of five stars as well. The next one I have to show you guys is this one. It is the Encyclopedia of Early Earth by Isabel Greenberg. I loved this. It was one that I picked up when I was reading a very dark, horrible book, which was The Little Life. I picked this up in the middle of reading that because I was just feeling really down and I wanted something light and something fun to give me a bit more <laughs> hope in the world, I guess. And this was exactly what I needed at the time. So if you're looking for something to sort of get you out of a funk, this is it. This is 100% it. It's quite a chunky book. It's quite a big book. But oh my gosh, it is absolutely beautiful. If you have a look at the end papers, you can see the sort of style that this illustrator draws in. It's very tribal inspired, I think. That's what I would say. Um, it also focuses a lot on sort of pattern, which is really cool. And very hand-drawn sort of tactile which I really really like even though it's all sorts of different colours there's usually only a few colours that are sort of pinpoint highlights um, and just draw your attention each page has its own story on each of the stories sort of focuses on one area of early earth which is kind of a similar idea to our own earth it takes a lot of uh, influence from our own mythology and religions and things like that but it's definitely a fantastical version of earth and uh you get sort of twisted versions of noah's ark and things like that but it's just a weird weird story so this is a twisted version of the whale when he gets trapped in a whale as you can see not so exciting for him but it's just it's such a beautiful story and it's kind of a story within a story because it's about this young couple who meet each other at the very beginning of the book and they cannot actually touch each other although they instantly fall in love with one another and so instead of being able to be intimate with each other what they do is they tell each other stories across the distance that they cannot cross and so this is the storyteller and he has travelled the world to come and find his one true love and he manages to tell her all of the stories that we actually read about in this book. Every other page or every page is a story that he has encountered or been told or gone through so I really really loved this, would highly highly recommend this and I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. The next one I have on my list is a massive one and this is The Inflatable Woman, it is by Rachel Ball and this again is a pencil drawn illustrated one. We follow this woman who is a regular down to earth everyday woman. She sort of has a life that she's interested in but she doesn't love her job or love her situation. She's just fairly content but we follow her when she's just starting to think about online dating. We also follow her as she just finds out that she has actually been diagnosed with cancer. So you have the happy side of this online dating relationship that she's really interested in and she wants to sort of make her life anew and she wants to meet people and get excited about that. But at the same time as that, we have her diagnosis going on and the fact that she is kind of living in denial about having cancer and doesn't want to confront it. This actually is kind of autobiography, I suppose, because Rachel Ball has dealt with cancer herself and she has been through the emotions that this lady is going through she has dealt with denial and trying to distract yourself from facing whatever it is and that's kind of the story that you get in this you follow this lady as she has to not only confront that she has cancer but also do things about it and kind of put some of the things she's very excited about on the back burner even though she's really excited about them i loved this it was fantastic the whole way through and it is all drawn on these black pages with pencil sort of highlight images in each page and all of the writing is hand drawn as well. I really connected with this even though I haven't gone through anything quite like it. I connected with the fact that some of it is fantastical because she's trying to get out of her own head. She's trying to sort of distract herself from everything horrible that she's being told about her body and the fact that it's kind of betraying her by getting cancer. She wants to just have fun with this guy that she's met online she wants to just enjoy her life and she can't really do that um but i really really liked this and i gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars as well and would again highly highly recommend this and the final one that i have to show you guys is sunstone volume 3 this is by stefan sajik 
and I very much enjoyed this series up to this point. As you guys know, it is a lesbian BDSM series. This is the third volume. I believe there are four out. I have the fourth one, but I have it at uni, so I'll probably read it very, very soon. I've loved these. It follows the story of Ali and Lisa, and the story of how they came to be a couple, how they adventured into the world of BDSM, how they met each other, how they grew to not only have a sexual relationship but also have an actual relationship, and it's incredibly, incredibly well done. It's all drawn and written by the same guy, and it is just a really realistic, beautiful, down-to-earth, not over-exaggerated depiction of what a real BDSM relationship would be like, and a lesbian one at that. I just think this is one of the sweetest, happiest, chirpiest, most wonderful graphic novels I've read, and I find that this is one of the only relationships in a book that I really root for them every time, because I think it feels so genuine. It feels so real, so delightful, so funny, and every time they have an argument or every time they misunderstand each other, I'm like, no, guys, you have to stay together. You have to be okay, because this is honestly one of the only couples I've ever really cared about in any sort of book, um, not just comics, but definitely in comics. I don't tend to get that involved in like romantic relationships. Usually I find them interesting, but this one just I love it and I think they are fantastic together and I think they respect each other and they respect themselves and I think they're just such a good representation of what a relationship should be let alone a BDSM relationship which is always going to be more about trust than other relationships and also lesbian relationships I don't think that that is done enough and I think that this is a fantastic depiction of it and I think they just keep getting better. I think the volumes just keep getting better and the artwork is also incredible. It is a bit saucy, obviously. It is an erotic series but I love it. I just think that it's super cute and I think the expressions are super cute and it's quite realistic at times but equally there are some moments where you get really over-exaggerated expressions that I think just work so incredibly well. There is a lot of text in this series as well and I think that's great because it explains so much about what the relationship is and what they have to discuss and what they have to do that's different to a regular sexual relationship um, because it is different. It's definitely not the same situation as a normal relationship where BDSM isn't involved. You have a lot more to think about when you are getting into a BDSM relationship and this is just absolutely stunning and lovely and wonderful and I just, I love it. I ship them, I ship them 100% and I would cry if they broke up, I think, because they're just such a good couple and I love them so much. So I gave this one five out of five stars. I would highly recommend this series if you guys haven't checked it out already. Please, please do. Those are all of the things that I have to talk to you guys about today. I know that there was quite a lot in this video, but I would love to hear your thoughts on them if you guys have read them or if you haven't read them, which ones are you interested in picking up now that I've told you a bit more about each of them. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all very soon in another video. Bye! Thank you for watching my video today. Go pick up a book, then come back and chat with me again.